I am Jessica Yench. I am the worship leader at Harvest Time Eau Claire. And today um, I titled this one, The Stand Part 1. So we're going to walk through what the words of the stand means. And in the devotional I um, was talking through Psalm 33. And as we go through this song, it's going to be pretty obvious that the stand came from, at least in part, um, Psalm 33. So the first verse is talking about God speaking into motion, and my soul is going to stand with him. Um, God stood before creation. He had eternity in his hand, and he just spoke. He spoke the earth into motion. He spoke, and then creation happened. And verse 2 says, You stood before my failure. Carry the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul not withstand. Now obviously that's not from Psalm 33, because Jesus wasn't here yet, but God does stand before our failures. It talks about in Psalm 33 how God remains firm. His plans never fail, right? There could be the biggest army in the whole world and a king would not be saved, or the mightiest warrior and his strength is not going to save him. Um, our, our failure is not too big for God to overcome. He, he alone is the one that is strong enough. He, is, he alone is the one that um, will be our firm foundation and stand on his plans and promises for us. Um, the pre-course, so what can I say and what can I do but offer my heart, O oh God, completely to you? And that's the end of Psalm 33. What else can we do other than offer ourselves to God? We have nothing in ourselves that God does not already have. He is the one that's perfect and we are the ones that are transformed to be like him. And so the only posture that we can take is, God, there's nothing I can offer you, but I can offer you my heart and I'm going to stand firm because you have already stood firm. Uh, verse 3, I'll walk upon salvation. Your spirit alive in me. So when we become a Christian, his spirit is alive in us, right? The Holy Spirit comes as soon as we invite him into our lives. And this life to declare your promise, my soul now to stand. So because God took a stand, because Jesus took the stand on the cross, we can then take a stand on salvation. And then the chorus, so I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned. There's nothing more surrendering in posture than having your arms just raised because there's no defense then. We can't defend ourselves when our hands are up in the air. There's, we're not taking an offensive stance. That's a, that's a I surrender to you. You have everything. Um, in awe of the one who gave it all. What Jesus did for us, giving it all, he laid it all on the cross. He gave his life for us, and we can stand in awe of his sacrifice for us. I'll stand, my soul, Lord, to you surrendered. All I am is yours. And so I'm just going to pray to end this, because isn't that what we want? That we are completely his, and it, when we take little things back, that's when things get messed up. But when we live our life fully surrendered, taking the stand to say, my life is fully surrendered to you, God. I don't want anything else. I don't want to take my life back into my own hands because I don't do that well. Um, so I'm just going to pray that that is our heart posture today. God, I am so thankful for who you are, for your power and your might, but also your love and your justice and your kindness. Um, and God, the only thing that we can do is stand in awe of who you are and surrender to you. And that is, that's part of the sanctification part. That's part of us becoming more and more like you. And that's what we want as your body, as your church. God, we want to become more like you and less like us. 